Good morning and welcome to Old St. Mary's in the South Loop of Chicago and OldStMary's.com on this Wednesday of the 11th week in Ordinary Time, on this day when we celebrate the federal holiday of Juneteenth. And so as we gather together, we pray. O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. As we gather in prayer, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask for God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Uh, the Mass for today that I'm using is the Mass for the Progress of Peoples. O God, who gave one origin to all peoples and willed to gather from them one family for yourself, Fill all hearts with the fire of your love and kindle in them a desire for the just advancement of their neighbor, that through the good things which you richly bestow upon all, each human person may be brought to perfection, every division may be removed, and equity and justice may be established in human society. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, he and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here. The Lord has sent me onto the Jordan. As the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will not leave you, Elisha replied. And so the two went on together. Fifty of the guild prophets followed, and when the two stopped at the Jordan, they stood facing them at a distance. Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, which divided, and both crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask for whatever I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha answered, May I receive a double portion of your spirit? You have asked something that is not easy, Elijah replied. Still, if you see me taken up from you, your wish will be granted. Otherwise, not. As they walked on conversing, a flaming chariot and flaming horses came between them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. When Elisha saw it happen, he cried out, My father, my father, Israel's chariots and drivers. But when he could no longer see him, 
Elisha gripped his own garment and tore it in two. Then he picked up Elijah's mantle that had fallen from him and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. Wielding the mantle that had fallen from Elijah, Elisha struck the water in his turn and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When Elisha struck the water, it divided and he crossed over. The word of the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, O Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, in which toward those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of the children of men. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. You screen them within your abode from the strife of tongues. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you his faithful ones. The Lord keeps those who are constant, but more than requites those who act proudly. Let all hearts take comfort in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, Close the door and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to others to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden, and your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to say that the readings of today set a path toward new beginnings. They give us a a different sense of what we're called to do and how we're called to look at our life before God and how in recognizing God's presence among us, we move forward. So when we hear of the passing of the mantles, so to speak, between Elijah and Elisha, there's a, a clear understanding as you look at it that God is at work here. I mean, Elijah says that to Elisha, and, and he gets it, and the power does come down on him, and he continues the work of Elijah, convincing people that God is in their midst and guiding them forward. And of course, today's gospel reading is, you all know where you most hear that, right? It's just like being back on Ash Wednesday. So whenever you hear that part of Matthew's gospel, it's okay to get back to Ash Wednesday to say, well, what, was, what is really at the heart of the reading when Jesus is telling, you know, 
do what your father calls to in secret. In other words, you can have a, a list of things that you're supposed to do during Lent, and you can put those up. You can boast all about them and say, I'm going to do this, this, and that. Or someone's going to give you a list and say, if you want to really be Catholic and really be holy, you've got to do all that. And you can do all that. And you can do it very publicly. And, and you know, you can meet and compare notes and say all that. But where's the conversion of heart really happening? It's okay to do those things, but the question is, is your heart being drawn closer to Jesus? Are you discovering that in giving alms in maybe a more public way, maybe there's a more private sense of you that, that you're giving something and you're noticing people who are in need? Or when you're praying, you're, you're, you're more committed to your prayer and, and, and you begin to let go of all the trappings of prayer and just be there with God, where we often get to is the sense of contemplation. And while I wasn't going to talk about him much, uh, Romuald, who is the saint that we would normally look at today, he was the founder of the Camaldolese Hermits, and so very much acquainted with reflection and prayer and, and solitude. And so that, that's a good saint to have praying for us today. And then, of course, in the midst of all of that, to understand the ways of God mean that we have to see that what we do individually and impacts what we do collectively and impacts what we are called to do in society. And so as we celebrate Juneteenth and we look back to this date in 1865 when the word that the African-American slaves were finally free reached Galveston and that finalized the message to go throughout the country, that we celebrate that day by, by saying anytime someone is enslaved, anytime someone is weighed down, anytime someone is discriminated against just based on who they are, we've got to change that. We've got to shift. We've, we've got to see that if all are not free, then none of us are free. It's the call of Christ to say, you got to look, and, and, and you can't just buy it because other people are telling you. You can't just buy it because it's the law. You can't just buy it because everyone's doing it. You have to ask the question is, what we are doing based on the call of Christ? You know, and, and if that's good, I mean, it, it's good when laws and, and governments reflects the love that we're called to follow within the scripture. It's good when that happens. When it doesn't happen, we have to keep working for it. And if it's not happening at a, at a national level, we have to work for it individually because ultimately it is the way of Christ. Just like in the gospel today, we receive our reward when we do things publicly and people give us accolades for that. But the real reward is knowing that our faith in Christ is what guides us forward. It is what progresses us individually and peoples and as peoples. And so let us continue to pray for our country that all may be free. Let us pray for the world, for an end to hatred and war and violence and indiscriminate discrimination that hurts people. And continue on with living our lives in the gospel. Let us together raise our prayers to the God who loves us. We pray for the work of the church throughout the world, that the gospel message may be proclaimed well, and that people may be offered solace in following it and understanding its ways. We pray to the Lord. We pray for civil governments throughout the world, that they may find pathways to true justice, peace, and freedom for all people. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for an end to war and hatred in our world. We pray to the Lord. For the continued progress of all of us as peoples to overcome whatever slaveries there are that still exist, 
that people may be more at peace with each other and more loving toward each other. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all people going through transitions at this time of year, graduates of schools, people changing jobs, people moving to new parts, people going on vacation. For all of them and their safety, we pray to the Lord. For everyone we've been asked to pray for and all those we have promised to pray for, those who have no one to pray for them, those who don't know how to pray, those people who are at crossroads in their lives today, for the people who join us online and for the people unable to be with us this morning, we pray to the Lord. And for all of our dear departed, especially this morning we remember Halsey Daly, we pray to the Lord. And all the prayers we have and hold, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, accept us and guide us by the power of your presence that our prayers may help all people through Christ our Lord. Amen. You are blessed, Lord God of all creation. And through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, fruit of earth, work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. Must be God. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Sisters and brothers, Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, in your mercy, hear the prayers of those who cry to you. And as you receive your church's offering, grant that all may be filled with the spirit of divine sonship so that with inequalities overcome by charity, one family of peoples may be formed in your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true. Truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. 
when we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our patron, with Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with St. Romuald and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. In the words Jesus himself gave us, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other Christ's peace. peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having been fed with one bread by which you constantly renew the human family, we pray, O Lord, that from participation in this sacrament of unity, we may draw a love strong and pure to help people in their development and prompted by charity fulfill the, what justice requires through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads and ask for God's blessing. O Lord, turn your people to you with all their heart, for you protect even those who go astray. But when they serve you with undivided heart, you sustain them with still greater care. Through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go to bring Christ's love to the world.